Hey guys, how's it going? So I think one of the really interesting things about Batman as a character is that hypothetically it could be anyone since he doesn't have any sort of supernatural powers. And I think one of the really interesting things that brings Batman to life is especially seeing him in live action. So I wanted to go through every version. So really it's just between Adam West as Batman then Michael Keaton, Val Kilmer, and George Clooney. I'm also going to put that in the same category. And then you have the big three recently with Christian Bale, Ben Affleck, and Robert Pattinson. And I think just a quick side note before I get into it, these are all in different time periods, both in their release, uh, the time that these movies came out, and the time that they take place within Gotham. So I'm taking that into account as well. First up, I would actually put the Michael Keaton Batman, same thing with Val Kilmer and George Clooney. I think while this is a really classic Batman, a really good addition, I just think it's really hard to take this version seriously because it seems like Gotham is really just kind of set up as a prop or a set itself. It doesn't feel realistic in any sense. A lot of the characters, whether it's the villains or the overall storylines, just don't really seem like they're taken that seriously. Whenever I watch clips of these movies, it seems like, if anything, I'm watching more of a theatrical performance, almost something more of how a fight or combat scenes might look in a musical or something like that. Because there's really just too much one-offs in terms of Batman just quickly punching someone with not that much force and then them just falling down. I think the flight sequences too where Batman's flying or using his cape is a little bit unrealistic. I think most of these versions do include some sort of flight but I just think especially here the way he's using it it doesn't have any sort of feel of something like a hang glider. He's just kind of opening and closing his arms and almost just floating in a lot of circumstances. So I just don't think any of that is really realistic, and that's really what hurts this version of Batman. Also, just looking at the suit, even though it obviously isn't as modern as some of the new ones, it just really gives off that rubber or latex feel. So it'd be really hard to believe that something like this or a Batman that looked like this would be pretty much fully bulletproof. So I doubt anything with this caliber would really outstand any sort of gunshots. And then moving on, I think this is really as high as you can put him, but I think Adam West's Batman isn't really that unrealistic if you think about it. Obviously, I think there's a lot of silly moments with all of the different TV shows that happen for Adam West and the movie, but I really think Adam West especially was really what started the comic book version of Batman for TV or for movies because even though there were those silent films that came before it, I think this is really where it all started. And I think especially looking at the Adam West version of Batman compared to the other ones, he really doesn't do anything that fancy. Obviously the costume looks a little bit goofy, it's more of just a cloth, but the way this Batman operates also has Robin as his sidekick for the majority of the time. It doesn't seem that far-fetched for someone who's basically using an alter ego or a disguise to help fight crime. Again, going back to the costume, I think in terms of it being realistic, it's pretty obvious who Batman and Robin are. And I think the biggest criticism is that he does a lot just in broad daylight, so I think that's pretty unrealistic even though he does have the police department's support. Anything he would do in the daytime would just take way too much attention. So I don't see that being very plausible. Also, the fight scenes, there's so many instances of guys all being in a room with lights on and Batman and Robin are just going around and engaging with these guys one on one. And while it isn't realistic, I think for someone like Batman or an experienced fighter to take multiple guys at once, I think where this would be a little bit questionable is that someone with a gun just having these guys wearing these kind of silly cost basically a halloween costume when they have their back turned with a gun at some point would probably get them so even as skilled as batman is i don't think 
all this broad daylight stuff is really realistic. So I really think that's the biggest criticism. I think if Adam West Batman would be adapted maybe in someone who's wearing more of a full costume, uh, whether it's bulletproof or not, and he's more of just acting as a nighttime detective or vigilante and really using his stealth, not being seen, taking on guys one-on-one. -on -one. I don't think an Adam West version of Batman in this sense would be that far away from a realistic portrayal of him, especially during this time period, but that isn't the case here. So that's why he's going to be second to last. And then obviously the big conversation between Ben Affleck, Christian Bale, and Robert Pattinson's. I think it's pretty safe to say that Ben Affleck's version takes the back seat here, especially because he was involved with the Justice League. I think that alone takes away from that realism, that realistic feel, because for one, he's fighting Superman using kryptonite. So I think all of that within itself it's hard to picture this version of Batman as being the most realistic one in comparison to the others. And then I think a little bit uh, more of his technology is drawn out in this. For instance, the Batplane. I don't think this would really be possible for a place like Gotham, even though it is a part of Batman. And then even some of the combat sequences, I think, are a little bit unrealistic. But I think a lot of the uh, warehouse scenes, for instance, even though they're really cool and really fast paced and maybe one of the best sound uh, Batman modern combat scenes that we've gotten. I don't think this is realistic either because taking on a full group and really just putting himself out in the open for such a long period of time, it seems like someone with a shotgun at some point or a grenade would be able to stop him even though he is doing several things at once. I think the warehouse scene would have been a little bit more realistic if maybe uh, more was done with him hiding and then jumping out, getting a few guys going back. And then also you have more of the dream sequences. So I think all of these things kind of contribute to a feeling that this is more of a fantastical version of Batman, even though it is in live action, and that's totally fine. I would say in his defense, I think in terms of getting a live action Batman, I think compared to the other actors, in terms of this being a more brute strength, more of a brawler for Batman, I do think that would be necessary because the weight is a little bit of a factor here. I'd say Pattinson especially is just a little bit too thin. Bale got in good shape, but I'd say Ben Affleck really gives a lot of presence uh, to his size, and I definitely see that being a physical necessity of Batman. So I think in that way, you could make the argument for Ben Affleck, but there's just too many other factors that really take you out of any sort of realistic version of Batman. So I think the big debate here is obviously between Christian Bale and Robert Pattinson, but I think it's a little bit hard to do a comparison here because you have the trilogy for Christian Bale, Robert Pattinson, we only have one film, even though we have a really good idea of what his Batman looks like and what the universe that Reeves is trying to portray is going to look like. So I think the best thing here would just be to compare one of Christian Bale's Batman movies to the Batman. And I think obviously between the three with Christian Bale, that would be the Dark Knight portrayal of Batman. So I think those versions of Batman's really where the debate is going to lie. But just for fun, Batman Begins is definitely a realistic version of Batman 2. I think this especially had a little bit of fantasy involved in there. I don't think all of the training that he goes through is unrealistic. I think that is really essential to even setting up Batman in the first place. I wouldn't even say any of the ninja training or the theatricality and deception is even that far-fetched. I would say the problem with Batman Begins would especially come with the tumbler and the water vaporizer. I just think that is really almost more science fiction than anything. I would say the tumbler scenes get a little bit funny. I think it's really hard to believe that a tank with a V8 engine. I still 
would see it being impossible for someone to drive that around Gotham, even a NASCAR driver without getting stopped by the police with some sort of blockade. And then especially where the line is drawn, I think is the jumping between rooftops. That's really, I think, where it takes you out of it just a little bit, even though it is neat to see in live action. But I'd say in comparison with someone like Ben Affleck, the warehouse scene in Batman Begins is pretty realistic because he's really kind of just taking guys out one by one using his grappling hook. He's hiding. He's not trying to take all of these guys on at once when he is uh, potentially at risk for one of those gunshot bullets getting through and hurting him. So I think the way that this happened isn't bad, but again, just more of the bigger things with the plot, with the water vaporizer and the fear toxin. So I think then the Dark Knight Rises is also in there as well. You have the whole plot line with Bane and his army. I think the bat, which is basically the aircraft that he's using, just really takes you out of that realistic element. And then especially since this is a crippled version of Batman and how he's just really able to get back on his feet by using this robotic knee brace. I will say again to this defense is that him losing to Bane I think is realistic he's a little bit rusty he's not in his prime but the big fight sequence at the end where all of the guys are just out on the streets of Gotham in broad daylight I think takes away from the realistic element you even have him just magically fixing his back so I think all of those things really hinder the realistic element for Batman in the Dark Knight Rises between the Dark Knight and the Batman I think Robert Pattinson would take second place by just a small margin. I think there's really a lot of elements where a lot of thought was put into how Batman could operate. I think you see that with his means of transportation. I really like how they had him driving both the motorcycle and the Batmobile when he knows he needs the Batmobile to chase down the Penguin. And I also really liked in the beginning of the movie how they have him changing into normal street clothes. So he's also walking through the street just to get a different perspective. And he's even using this type of wardrobe to escape without attention from the crime scene for the mayor. So I think that is really small details that adds to the realistic element of Batman. I think more of the problem lies with that flight sequence, how he's able to just escape from the Gotham Police Department. And then the way he's just able to embrace the impact where he's not able to get a clean landing. Maybe you could make the argument that that's realistic since everything doesn't go smoothly, but the fact that he just basically fell at such a high speed, I doubt he would be able to even get up from that and walk away from it. I think there's also something like the hallway scene where there's just a bunch of guys and they're just really shooting him and he's just walking right through it. I think even some really good uh, bulletproof vests. You do have bullets getting in there at some point, especially with half of your face exposed. And then I think even things with the adrenaline getting fully shocked, withstanding the blast of the bomb at such a close distance. I think that takes away from Robert Pattinson's version of Batman, even though I think most of the combat scenes are pretty well laid out. Maybe you could question the technology of his contacts recording everything that he does, but I think hands down, the Dark Knight version of Batman is probably the closest to what we'll get in terms of a realistic version of Batman. You don't have the tumbler for the Dark Knight. A lot of the combat scenes are pretty much believable. You have him embracing a lighter suit so he's able to turn his head and move more but you have a little quotes such as Morgan Freeman or Lucius Fox telling him that it's not going to take close shots he has problems with the dogs and I think you maybe have a little bit of questionable acts such as him jumping down from the parking garage and landing on a moving vehicle or taking on a whole SWAT team that is a little bit more unrealistic, maybe if he was just able to flood the scene. But I'd say most of the combat scenes aren't that far-fetched. Maybe you have some questionable instances of flight here. I would say in terms of comparing something like this to a hang glider, it's not that far off in terms of it being believable. 
Obviously, the breaking through glass is a little bit questionable, or even his grappling hook connecting to a plane to make a clean getaway. But I'd say most of his operations don't seem too far out of the ordinary for what someone like Batman would actually look like. And I think a lot is put on the mental impact of being Batman, his feelings as a human, the psychological trouble of weighing the losses as Batman. And I think that's done especially a lot more than any of other portrayals. I'd almost say it's more of a middle ground between Bruce Wayne and Batman. When you see him in the Batcave, when you see him with his mask off, I would say Christian Bale's acting of him in this sense is really what creates that human connection to making this feel like a real life person. And then you even have other things such as I'd say in the whole trilogy, the Batcave basically being underground is probably the more realistic version of it or even in more of a sea train or a construction site. So I think little details like that really make this the closest to a realistic version of Batman. And I think that's really where Christopher Nolan has taken it to the next level and laid the groundwork for what this grounded version of Batman can look like. And I'd say he comes pretty close to perfect in The Dark Knight. So I'd say this is the real Batman. This is the most realistic version of Batman in live action that we've seen so far, but feel free to let me know which version is the most realistic. I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you later.